What's happening, guys, and welcome to our weekly Impact Wrestling Review. I'm Keith, and I'm joined by Ro. What's going on, man? Not much, man. How you doing? I'm doing all right. So uh, I hear you got to see the entire show last night. Yes, and it, it wasn't too late either. It was pretty cool to be able to watch the show in its entirety because, you know, once again, when you watch on YouTube, it's easy to forget the other little things that you'd miss that happen on the show. Yeah, no, absolutely. I did get to see the full show as well. I mean, overall, I I enjoyed it, I, I must say. They did some really good things. Um, you know, there was some throwaway stuff, but that's normal in any show. Uh, what were your overall thoughts of it? I'm going to have to disagree with you, man. Uh, for me, <laughs> For me, I mean, outside of a couple of matches, I just... Um, I just found myself and I, you know, at first I kind of attributed to maybe I was just tired, but then I stayed up an additional hour, you know, messing around on Xbox. I, uh, I just wasn't really feeling this episode, man. Hey, you know what? We can have a different opinion and still get along. And that's the big picture here. (laughs) Right on. (laughs) All right. So, you know, open the show. They're setting up for the main event. Um, then we get to our first match of the evening, and that's OVE versus Tommy Dreamer, Rich Swan, and Willie Mack. Um, I thought this was a perfectly fine show, a, a match for the show. I mean, the crowd was super vocal during the whole match. Um, as much as I've crapped on Tommy Dreamer, they the crowd definitely loves him. Um, we did see Tommy Dreamer eat some of Sammy Callahan's spit, so that was uh, pretty disgusting. <laughs> but uh, Callahan ends up picking up the win after uh, the groin claw, as uh, Don Callis put it, and then he hit a pile driver. So, like I said, this was good to open the show. Crowd was into it. It's always good to see. Um, what do you think overall of this? Yeah, I agree with that. Um, you know, Impact never goes wrong when they open up with, you know, whether it's an exhibition match or some type of multi-man match. Obviously, this is a six-man tag. Um, you know, I thought the right team won in being mm-hmm. OVE. Just because they have experience as a team, whereas you could argue, you know, while I know uh, Swan and Willie Mack have tagged, but, you know, Willie Mack, Swan, and uh, Dreamer have never really tagged. But, yeah, the crowd was really into this, and uh, you couldn't ask for anything else. And, you know, they've really done a great job with the storytelling between Callahan and Swan. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm really interested to see what happens. uh, I know they announced later in the show, but uh, next week, the main event is going to be Rich Swan defending his X Division title against Sammy Callahan. So that yeah. should be really good. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, you know, I mean, you really distinguish the heels and the face here. Um, I, I really hope they do take advantage of Willie Mack's popularity because anytime he gets in the ring, the crowd gets super hyped and behind him. So hopefully, eventually, something works out for him, too. Yeah, um, you know, right now, you know, I think what he had, he came back at a bound for glory. I mean, there's there's so many different paths they can go with him. I mean, I really think they still could do, like, say, assuming the Swan and Callahan feud um, doesn't drag out too too long. Not that I would have a problem with it, but if they always wanted to do, like, the friend turned on friend, I mean, that's mm-hmm. something in their back pocket they could do as well. It's true. It's true. Um, we did see what Callahan and... Willie Mack have a match at homecoming and then a rematch a couple weeks later. So, I mean, this thing's been going on for a little while now, but uh, things seem to be really heating up. And like you said, next week our main event is Sammy Callahan versus Rich Swan for the X Division Championship. Um, then we had the uh, Rascals backstage. I really enjoyed this. Um, so they, you know, did a little back and forth about losing to the Lucha Brothers last week, saying they didn't wear their masks. And then Moose pops up. He says, you know, I think it was the mask. And then he makes a joke about the guy last week that or he was asking first to where the ladies were and what's with all the smoke. And then he wants to know about the guy that got shot down by Melissa. And then they all start laughing and making fun of his uh, attire choice. And then Moose, you know, says that was me. And then he starts choking, I think, uh, Trey out. And then he hits Dez and Wentz. Um, I just thought overall this was a good segment. And I really like that they made mention of them making fun of Moose last week and continued it this week. It's just little things like that that really go a long way. Um, I wouldn't even mind seeing Moose end up having a match with one of them, or even if he ends up having singles matches where he goes through all three of them just to continue this going and, you know, doing something. 
yeah, I liked his inclusion in this, and it had me wondering if maybe this was just a one-off, or are they going to look to feud? I mean, hell, I'd even do Moose versus all three. I think that'd be interesting, you know, um, given that his partner, I don't know if they're still partners, is kind of tied into something else, but uh, this gives him something, something for Moose to do, so... Yeah, I like this. He's beating up the rascals. <laughs> oh yeah, no, and it just felt so natural for Moose. It, it 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 just it was good, and you know I like when there's just segments that you can just enjoy, and that's it. You know, with Moose, um, you know I thought, and I've been very impressed with his full heel turn and how he's just really kind of taking the ball with it. Because I had always thought they should have given him the shot with the world title at uh, last year's slam anniversary, mm-hmm. but they decided not to go that route and turn him. And, uh, you know, at first I was sour on it cause I'm like, God, they always are turning people. And that's like their answer. And, uh, <laughs> but he's really taking the ball with this. And, um, this would be interesting. I really want to see how this plays out. Um, like you said, he could probably feud with them individually. I'd love to see a, a three on one. I mean, I think Moose can take them all out. <laughs> Yeah, and, yeah, and I, you know, that wouldn't be something that would do any damage to the Rascals because, again, Moose is a main event man. So, uh, yeah, we'll see where they go with that. Hopefully they do something. So up next we have Glenn Gilberti versus Kikitaro. Um, he's preparing for his match with Scarlett in, what, two weeks, right? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, so uh, this was this was something. I'm not going to lie. I fast-forwarded through the majority of this match. Um, Gilberti picks up the win with... I guess some sort of stunner, but uh, yeah, not not much to really say here. I like the Kikataro guy. I mean, he's good for comedy relief. Like he would be a guy that you want to use. You know, obviously enhancement talent, or even if you know an explosion regular. My thing was just like this: though they were uh, pumping this up as this is a a skills. Um, I forgot what the terminology they used or exhibition. I think. Mm-hmm. I didn't understand how this prepared him for Scarlet, given, for starters, this guy's bigger than Scarlet. So <laughs> one one would uh, would assume that if he was going to prepare for Scarlet, he'd either face someone the size of Scarlet or ha- face another knockout. You know, I, I right. thought that would have been interesting, to have him face a knockout and kind of run through her. So then, you know, you, you could... Uh, um, promote the fact that hey while you know disco displayed it well glenn gilberti i'm sorry <laughs> Disco. he was still doing his <laughs> disco moves right uh you know he you know he he uh, ran through the opponent you know this is a he this is different you know from facing scarlet so i just didn't get it and um you know on top of that it went long and kiko taro got a lot in so mm-hmm. i mean you know, I don't know. It, it didn't bother me as much. I mean, I guess it was kind of cool to see Disco wrestle again. I was uh, pretty much impressed that he still can kind of go. I don't know how old he is. He, I don't think he's super duper old. Probably but late 40s, I would assume. But, uh, um, and I, I forgot he used the, uh, um, they call it the chart buster. I mm. forgot he used the stunner, though. I was just like, he, he uses a stunner? But, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, nonetheless, I mean, I guess this... This um, this is a way to prepare for Scarlet. Yeah, I guess so. Um, but yeah, I've shared my thoughts. So it is what it is. Can't like everything. I mean, you know, I guess you can. But uh, so then uh, Taya is backstage. She's asked about facing the winner of Tessa versus Jordan Grace later on tonight, and she will face them at Against All Odds. She says that's not her main focus. Her main focus is on Johnny. Yeah. Yeah. You want to go first? <laughs> no, nah, you can share your thoughts. <laughs> I hated this. And for the simple fact, because all, you know, stemming from uh, the end of last week's show when they were promoting this, uh, the number one contendership match, they used Ty in the background as a graphic as obviously the focal point. Now, I get the story they want to tell because she's tied into, you know, the main event as of right now with Johnny Impact and what he's going through. But I really hate, hated the dismissal of her not caring. I mean, maybe if she would have said something in the likes of, like, uh, I'm not worried because, you know, I'm the champ and they got to beat me and nobody's beating me. But and right now I'm focused on, you know, what's happening with my husband. I can, I can vibe with that. But mm. to totally dismiss it, like, 
it just kind of just brings me back to we see this happen a lot where they put the title on the on these people and the title kind of is hostage mm -hmm. for something else that's not circled around the title. We seen this not too long ago between LAX and uh, the OGs. I think only oh, once yeah. LAX put the titles on the line and you're holding it you're holding it hostage, hostage. Yep. and I I just kind of just felt like a match of this caliber between Tessa and uh, Grace it should have been perceived as a big deal where the champion should be looking like hey, you know what? Like I you know need to take some sort of notice of this because you know these are the two people coming after me or one of these people are going to be coming after me so to totally dismiss it i, I really didn't like that yeah no I, I agree with you there and i think that was one of our worries when taya did pick up the knockouts championship is that there was really no plan in place because there was nobody that she was really going to face next it just didn't seem like anybody was waiting in the wings to go so well well, they have people like, and that was a thing, and we'll get to it. Like, they have people for her to face. I mean, you could have done, you know, a Sue Young, an Ali. There's people, but I think the biggest fear that I had was, and we see this a lot. When anytime you have a real life couple in the same promotion, a lot of times they can't help from leaking them together, and <laughs> and that's kind of like even we seen at a. Uh, the end of homecoming where you had her coming out mm -hmm. and she was embracing with Johnny and they're both raising their titles. And then, you know, ever since then they've kind of been tying them together. And that's the thing you hate because, you know, she's champion in her own right. So she really should be kind of like doing things within the Nagas division. Yeah. You come to help aid your husband, but you know, she's still the champion. And I guess that's the thing we see, see right now. So I guess for the time being, the title is going to take a back seat. Yeah. Yeah, um, I think they did make a post, I think I saw earlier on Facebook, and they did call them indeed the power couple. So, yep. Yep, yep. And then we have Reno Scum versus Falaba and KM. Reno Scum takes out Falaba before the match. They throw him into the steps. So the match starts, and it's pretty much a handicap match. They're able to take advantage of KM being by himself. Falaba ends up getting back in. He hits a belly-to-belly -belly suplex and uh, picks up the win. And that was that uh, rematch from a couple weeks ago with the uh, same result. So I don't know if we're going to see Reno Scum again. You know, the finish took me took me by surprise because I you know I thought, thought the belly to belly will when follow uses it was just kind of a transition move to him doing the bonsai drop mm -hmm. so when I saw he got the three I was just like oh, okay yeah it's a it's interesting to see what happens um I was of the mindset that Reno Scum was just working these tapings because I yeah. think they're they're local talent in Vegas yeah because but... I think they're working the uh, ring of honor tapings that took take place over this weekend Oh, okay. So, yeah. So, I mean, maybe this is the end. You know, who who knows? Um, but yeah, just weird. I, I thought if they were going to kind of uh, continue this, you know, maybe we would have saw some kind of DQ finish. But, you know, two clean victories for KM and Fala. So. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's good for them, you know. It was mm -hmm. something we've been wanting for a while and not coming at the expense of the Desi Hit squad. So, it makes sense. And I'm okay with that. <laughs> yep. so then we have the lucha brothers backstage they meet up with conan he wants to know when the rematch is pentagon does the zero fear and it goes nowhere so again conan is well i should say lax because conan's a part of them is disrespected and then we head back over to lax's hideout conan is obviously pissed he says they disrespect him they talk about a 5150 street fight. LAX asks about the rematch, and Conan said he is going to get that rematch. So I would assume that it will probably be a 5150 street fight between the two teams. Yeah, you know what? I can see a double turn happen here because even though I know they told us a couple weeks ago with taking the mass that LAX has turned heel, I mean, the way that the Lucha Brothers have been acting, it just, it just, it doesn't strike me as something that faces will do and have the fans really booed lax like no i don't <laughs> i don't think they've booed either team that's the problem yeah and i think when it boils down to it i could see them um cheering on lax more than the lucha brothers just by the lucha brothers behavior like i said it's nothing that's giving me the indication that they're kind of the sole face they've been like brushing off the challengers like mm -hmm. the only thing LAX has done is taking their masks, you know, but why they took their masks, you know, you know, for They're them, provoked. Being, 
yeah, <laughs> and being being disrespected. And then even backstage in this segment, like they didn't give off any type of heelish tendencies. They were just essentially chopping it up. And then when Conan breaks the news and they're all concerned, like, bang, we're not going to get our rematch. Mm. You know, so it's just weird. Yeah. But uh, I'm sure that will happen probably at Rebellion. Uh, but who knows? Uh, then we had Tessa versus Jordan, which I would easily say was match of the night. I thought these two put on a hell of a match for the time given. Um, I mean, you talk about in WWE about the women possibly main eventing WrestleMania. And this is definitely a match I could see main eventing any big impact pay-per-view in the future. Um, Jordan gets a near fall after a Michinoku driver. Uh, Tessa goes up top. At one point, she ends up getting distracted by the fans. Something to do with Gale. They had a really good back and forth, and then Jordan ends up picking up the victory if, with a grace driver. Um, just a clean victory. But uh, I thought this match was very, very good. What, do, what did you think? I agree. Um, this is what I was looking forward to the uh, the whole night, actually. Um, and it delivered. I thought this was kind of a big step in the right direction for grace just because she, since she's arrived outside of katarina she's really kind of just been mixing it up with you know ali sue young and teaming with kiera so you know this was a big big deal and then tessa you know we know what she brings to the table um yeah i really like this and i agree it could be a main event and the one thing where impact doesn't get enough credit is when they push their women, it's not part of any type of agenda. It's, true. Like it's it's just an organic thing where people dive in. Like nobody's watching just because it's women, or they're not overrating the hell out of it because it's women. You know, they're enjoying it because of the participants in the match. Right. And and this is something like down the road if they want to revisit, because I'm assuming the title match we're probably going to get it at Rebellion. You know, maybe her and Taya mix it up before then, but we'll probably get it at Rebellion. But I will say, once they put the title on Grace, because I fully believe she's winning it, um, there's going to be a lot for her to work with. I don't think it's going to be a situation where you have this face challenger and she has nobody to challenge. I mean, like I said, you got Tessa, you got Sue Young, you got Allie. There's going to be plenty of mm -hmm. um, knockouts for her to work with, so that should bode well for her. Right, and it does help that that is the only title in the division. So, I mean, just a little bit of work, and you can have anybody basically be a contender. But, I mean, just overall, I thought these two just worked so well together. It didn't seem like anyone was taking, you know, doing most of the work. It just seemed, like I said, very good. I was impressed. I mean, I knew it was going to be good, but just glad we got it. And then what's encouraging, what I love is because both of these uh, wrestlers are really young. You know, I think uh, early or mid 20s. And, you know, that's what you have to look at as far as the future. When you're talking about the future of not only your company, but the knockouts division, you want that young talent that you can, that can, you know, you could have locked down for a few years and, you know, be the face of the company, so to speak. So, you know, that was good in its own right as itself. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, post match, Tessa pushes the ref and then she has a meltdown. She goes after the, the ring boy. And then uh, Gail uh, comes out, they fight, and then Gail chases her off. We go backstage, Tessa's getting checked on by the medical staff. Scott Demore comes up, Tessa's flipping out. Gail then shows up, they have a back and forth. Scott's pissed that Gail got involved and put her hands on a competitor. She sus he suspends Gail for a week, and then uh, Tessa gets checked on. I mean, I thought they had a really good back and forth here, um, and, uh, you know, Tessa basically was in the right because Scott made some valid points. Uh, what'd you think? Yeah, I like that Scott uh, sided with Tessa. Um, you know, I've already mentioned before, it's not something I'm looking forward to just because I worry that the wrong person will win in this feud, uh, being Gail Kim. But, I mean, I guess it gives something, gives Tessa something to do instead of chasing the knockouts championship at yeah. this time. Uh, so yeah, so I'm guessing this is something that we'll see at Rebellion as well. Probably. But um, yeah, I, I really I don't know if we've seen. I think we only seen it once, but and I'm sure we'll see it leading up. I really just want to see Tessa beat the crap out of Gail Kim. <laughs> <laughs> just just beat just like you know one one of these episodes. Just 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 ruthlessly just just take her out. 
Yeah, I don't yeah. want to see no type of comeuppance from Gail. Just I want to <laughs> see her laid out, just you know, lifeless. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't think that's going to happen, unfortunately. But no, I definitely see it. But they, you know, they they put the intensity there. I think the addition of Scott in the whole thing adds value to it. So, um, yeah, I, I didn't mind this at all. Uh, then we had Allie and Rosemary backstage. Allie says the bunny is dead because Rosemary left. Rosemary says you didn't listen and you let the darkness consume you. Rosemary wants to know where the bunny is. So, you know, this was basically where they were getting at with the whole um, undead realm thing. We kind of knew it was going to end up being Allie and Rosemary. And uh, they should do a good job with this. I just hope that Sue and everybody else has something to do in the meantime. Yeah, um, as long as these two are the focal point, I'm fine because I'm over the whole undead realm. I've been over it. They've uh, dragged this out forever, and I understand it had much more to do with Rosemary's injury, but this should be the focal point. And I just kind of wonder what would be the outcome once they're all said and done. Like, are they is Ali going to turn back? Or is she going to stay stay like this? Or you know, what if they form a team? I mean, there's so many different possibilities, but yeah. I think. With Rosemary and Allie being the focal point, like, that's all I can ask for. Yeah, no, absolutely. I agree with you. Um, so it'll be interesting to see where they go with that. Um, and then we see OVE backstage. Sammy says Rich threw it all away and messed up everything. Sammy says he's going to take everything away from Rich, and he's going to start next week with his X Division Championship. So we mentioned that earlier, that that match is going to happen. And then they just did a little backstage segment here, which I thought was good. I really like these you know, OVE segments, I think they're just very raw and very them. <laughs> I guess that's a way to put it. You know, with Callahan, his feuds, man, like, even though, I don't want to say they drag out, but, you know, he's done great work when, in every feud that he's been in since he's been in Impact, and this is no different. So yeah. I'm really looking forward to the main event next week. I agree. Um, so we had Eli Drake and Eddie Edwards versus the Desi Hit Squad. Um, the Desi Hit Squad definitely got a lot more offense in than I originally expected. Um, Gama ends up getting involved. He distracts the ref. Eli on the outside throws Kenny into Eddie. Eddie uses it on Rohit, and they pick up the win. Um, so you, we mentioned, I don't think we talked about this on the podcast uh, we did talk about it offline, but um, Eli had posted an interesting hashtag when he was speaking about his future, and he said, hashtag last dance. Do you think there's any uh, anything going on there? Um, if I had to put on a, uh, a percentage, I would say 60-40, he's leaving. I think, because I, I forgot when he signed his last contract. I want to say it was sometime July. last year. Oh, July. Yeah. Okay. I really think it's one of those wait and see approaches. I think he's going to hang around and not just him. I think a lot of people, they're going to wait to see what happens with AEW as far as if they get on TV. And then um, I, he could be somebody I could see making the leap. I, uh, you know, walking away from this match. You know, I was kind of disappointed because I kind of uh, I was while I was looking forward to it. You know, it just didn't do anything for me, maybe because it was, they were facing the Desi Hit squad. And the moment they walk out, I already kind of award the team they're facing the win. <laughs> um, but the proclamation I made is either Drake is going to be world champion, it's just not going to be for impact. So mm -hmm. wherever he goes next, he's probably going to win the world title there. But yeah, I unless something changes where he you know they do some type of booking change and he doesn't strike me as somebody will hey, push me to the top and i'll stay stay i just think have some type of direction for him instead of kind of just dicking him around so to speak yeah. but uh yeah I, I i think he's on his way out yeah it's just interesting they keep pushing the point of them going for tag team gold and i mean i unless they do the lax versus the lucha brothers at the Canada tapings, which I believe take place next weekend, um, it wouldn't be until post rebellion that they go into this feud. So it'll be interesting to see if this drags out that long. Yeah, and I mean, look, I would hope to be wrong, but I mean, I think we're just at a point, and you know, there's some people who aren't Eli fans, so obviously they don't care one way or another. You know, they're happy however mm -hmm. he's used, but it, it's kind of just coming to a point they don't see him as world title material apparently because well, if they did there were there was countless opportunities to kind of put him in the main event picture yeah and uh look looking back at it a year later and he's 
going for the tag team gold again with a different partner because last year around this time is uh when him and uh scott steiner won the titles you know and then at least with that i thought the way that it was kind of billed is you had this the guy of the company so to speak you know facing a you know a hall of famer in in uh form former world champion well t- not facing i'm sorry teaming up with him so you mm-hmm. know that's always a good rub but you know to have him you know they just kind of just had him all over the all over the place you know you think about most recently with this whole you know t- taking down hardcore stuff and i'm the last of a dying breed you really could have done something with that oh yeah you know, where where he was you know kind of a uh, uh dismissing a, a lot of the flippy stuff hell you could even had him wrecking the x division i mean it hasn't stopped anyone before i mean there's <laughs> just it's just so many uh endless possibilities but i just think in maybe booking booking uh or, or booking well creative kind of knows that he has one foot out of the door so they don't have no real big plans with them yeah. but then i would i would argue this that hasn't stopped them from pushing people before. I mean, there's been people who've been on handshake deals and they've given them championships. So I think oh, at the yeah. end of the day, it's just a vision. And I don't, I don't think Don, I don't think Don's really ever been high on Eli, unfortunately. No. Yeah. And I kind of get that's the same feeling as well. All right. Let's move on to the main event. This was supposed to be Johnny Impact versus Brian Cage. We see Johnny is being carried out. By Killer Cross, his music hit. He didn't come out. Cross is carrying him out. Over his shoulder, cinder block in hand. We see them go into the ring. Security comes down. Cross takes them out. Cross sets up the cinder block against Johnny's head. Taya leading Brian Cage onto the ramp. Taya ends up throwing her body on top of Johnny. Cage is just watching from on top. Uh, Taya hits Cross. Cross starts to go after Taya. That's when Brian Cage comes to the ring. He takes out Killer Cross. Taya thanks Cage with a hug. Then she ends up hitting him with a low blow. Johnny jumps up perfectly fine. He takes out Cage. He then lays the cinder block against Cage's head and strikes it with a chair. We have a Johnny Impact heel turn. Yay. This is what was needed. (laughs) I mean, I think they need to go about this the right way. I, I think... As long as they do it like they did it with Matt Seidel, he changes up his whole repertoire, his move set, everything like that. I think they'll be all right with it. You're asking for too much, Keith. I am. Stop. (laughs) Um, Okay, I'll go with this first. You know, I think, you know, a lot of people have thought he needed to turn heel. You know, I thought the window to do it would have been probably after homecoming. But then obviously tapings. Yeah, or, yeah, exactly. You know, even though I know we had the killer cross, um, him tossing Taya, which is weird that now they're in a sense kind of aligned, but that's here nor there. I I think the key thing is you're turning him heel. He needs to be different than like you can't have him be something he he was in other companies so i don't want to see johnny nitro i don't want to see john morrison i don't want to see johnny mundo he needs to be a totally different heel killer character for impact and i think that'll be the key for it being successful um as far as you know the whole turn goes i mean you could kind of see it from a mile away it seems so predictable um well i they uh, they, they were going to have to turn somebody heel, and we knew it wasn't going to be Cage. They didn't have to. They chose to. Because I really think... Well, I'm... The th- uh, no, go ahead. No, the, what they really fell into, just for me, and um, you know, you could tell me or anyone else to tell me, I really thought the big story was... Be, or the big feud in this was uh, Cross and Johnny. I really thought that's kind of like where their money was. And I get, you know, they want to push Cage you know, and put him, you know, will eventually put the world title on him. But I really thought like the, the uh, story between cross and Johnny impact was, uh, was nice. And I really thought he should have been the one dethroning him. Just given all that cross has done cross has really these past few months, he's really developed his character. You Mm -hmm. take back, I mean, you think back to when he had started pairing with Austin Aries, where he was just kind of just a, um, 
a hired gun, so to speak. And then to be out on his own and the work that he's done has just been phenomenal. And now, once again, to be in the background, because now, because essentially now you turn Johnny, that main event picture that we had is just between two people now. Like, Cross isn't going to challenge Johnny. You know, he's going to pretty much take a back seat. But, um, and then, you know, Taya's whole inclusion, once again, you know, you, the, the knockouts championship is going to be playing hostage. I'm assuming she'll probably cut some type of promo against Grace, but her involvement is, involvement is going to be more with whatever Johnny's doing. And you hate that, you know, with the champion, you know. So, um, and then, one, you know, obviously Brian Cage gets screwed again. So mm -hmm. something that, you know, they've been facing since homecoming. And this is going to get dragged out all the way to rebellion. So for those people who are sick and tired of Johnny Impact, you know, the coronation of Cage isn't coming till April, what, 28th? Something like that. Yeah, so i um, going to have to gut it out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I know. that. That's my fear, too, is that Cross is just going to get pushed to the background again when he was making such good strides. They had such a good main event picture going. I, like, I don't know if Moose is just going to be completely thrown out of this or we're going to see something between him and cross or what's going to happen. I mean, there, there's a lot of ways they can go with it, but it's all going to lead to the, like you said, coronation of Brian cage being the new world champion. Well, if they wanted to tell another story too, and I do emphasize if they could really talk about cross knowing how Johnny was. And I, I know the way that they were playing it is, Oh, Johnny decided to take it, take up Cross's offer. So after Cross tosses his wife, that was kind of like, oh, okay, let me <laughs> let, let, let me uh, take take your offer. If you like, can't beat him, join him. I, I just kind of thought if you wanted to do a heel turn, there was so much that they've done with Cross where you could you shouldn't have done that with Cross. You could have just had it, you know. You could have, like I said, you could have had it at homecoming and just yeah. done it, done it like that. But you know, they took us on this big old journey where you had Cross trying to go for the title, and then you had Moose, and then you had a Fatal Four. Like you had all this different, different stuff, which you know it was great, just because it's like, all right, this is our main event scene, nice. So you know, all these people were gonna, you know, next couple months, you know, one of these people are gonna grab the title. But then it just boiled down to know who, who, what the focal point always was was between cage and uh johnny impact and unfortunately i do think cross is going to take a back seat and yeah. you know you have some who believe he doesn't need a title um hey maybe but once again you know he might be he i might i'm starting to see with him he's probably going to be a world champion it just might not be an impact so yep he's and building, yet, he's building yet, himself yet, up here sorry yeah, no, no, you're you're fine. I mean, yeah, I'm in agreement. You know, just you just hate to see guys who really kind of uh, who have nothing and really kind of get themselves over, so to speak, and then not be rewarded. Well, yeah, especially when it's so realistic because Killer Cross seems to live his persona. And, and just... you could have really, really got something out of a Cross versus Cage. Like, I don't I don't think, you know, if the, the goal was to put the is the goal is to coordinate cage. And we all know that's what it is, mm -hmm. you know, given how many times they faced each other. Uh, he's faced Johnny Impact. You still could have done that. You know, you could eventually had him defeat Johnny Impact and then face uh, um, world champion Killer Cross. And you still kind of get the same result. But, you know, they're hell bent on doing this cage versus uh, um Johnny Impact things. So, yeah. I mean, like I said, some people, they thought this was what was needed. I've just been of the mindset, if you're not a fan of Johnny Impact, this isn't going to change. If anything, this is going to piss you off even more because <laughs> I, I really think we're probably going to be headed to open up the show or, you know, having some type of promos where Ty is taking over the promo and Johnny Impact's probably just sitting in the background, you know, throwing in his two cents. You know, if he was corny as a face, he's going to be corny as a heel. Um, so, um, yeah, uh -huh. and it's just something that's going to be dragged out to rebellion. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to crap all over it just yet. There's still time. Um, it'll, it'll just be very interesting to see what they do and, uh, how they do it. The, uh, Canada tapings next week should be very good just because, um, the fans are always fantastic there. I think that was their best shows last year, uh, prior to Slammiversary. I think they taped in June 
And then we heard that um, Lance Storm is going to be involved behind the scenes, and he's such an excellent mind for the wrestling business. So I think he's going to add a lot of value there. You know, one thing, and I'll touch on the Lance Storm, and tell me, maybe this was me, did it feel like the turn went flat, or did did you get the the sense that the crowd was like just kind of in disbelief? Um, I honestly wasn't paying too too much attention, but it wasn't. There definitely wasn't a huge reaction, but um, you know, regardless if it did go flat, it's just going to be turn that it was disbelief. It just because you know, even when he was uh, coming out, I was uh, you know when his music played, I was looking for you know some booze, and everybody was really cheering for him. And then even when he turned, you know, mm-hmm. I heard the why Johnny why like I I don't know maybe it was just me, but it seemed like it went flat. So it's just kind of like if this bombs, you know, you turned pretty much your top face because he was the de facto you know top face right. into a heel. So now that's Brian Cage. So you know. Yeah. Well, we'll... Also, a big thing is when it was taped during the tapings as well. Okay, yeah, that, that's probably that's probably true too. I mean, remember that was a big thing in Orlando when they would tape all those shows. Yeah, the crowd obviously crowd fatigue. But um, about Lance Storm, I am interested to see um if we see any kind of uh, differences in the booking. And what I mean by just differences is just like how the show, the flow of the show is in Canada. But once again, I'm just always of the mindset. You can bring in all these names. Well, how much of an input do they really have? Because I'm guessing Don has final say so. So we'll never know what stuff gets approved, what stuff gets rejected. So, you know, we already got Dreamer and Conan at the helms. And for the most part, even though like this episode, like I said, I wasn't really feeling it like you know, these tapings, they, they've, you know, been pretty solid for the most part. Yeah. So we, we see something, but we see this a lot when anytime a new regime starts, like first few tapings, they're solid. And then something kind of just tail spins. Yeah. Well, they, they have been going with a more story approach to things. So if that continues, you know, I'm definitely on board. Agreed. Agreed. But yeah, I mean, I don't really have much more. I honestly didn't look over questions from last week. I don't know if you saw anything that caught your eye. Um, I think somebody here, I can bring it up. In the meantime, you want to talk about uh, OVE resigning? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, that was announced, what, first that Jake had resigned, I think, and then Dave resigned, or it was just mentioned uh, separate occasions. They probably both re-signed together. Um, no, good for them. I'm glad to have them on board. I mean, uh, it'll be interesting if there is actually a long-term plan with them because it seems like they've just been in Sammy's shadows for a long time. Yeah, I mean, I was happy. I mean, I, OV is my favorite team. And, uh, you know, I know it's unfortunate. They've kind of just taken a back background role but hopefully down the road there's some type of plan to kind of build their stock back up yeah because i really think they should be one of these teams and i'm not saying necessarily like they got to win it but you know you want to build them credible to a point where if they do face whomever the champion is that uh they're a viable threat you know given that they're former uh tag team champions but you know nonetheless resigning talent that's good because um you know, you, you don't know with um, a- AEW, you know, trying to get talent and, you know, you know, WWE, they can't have enough talent mm-hmm. and Ring of Honor, all these other promotions trying to, you know, get talent. You know, it's good to keep yours. And that's one thing. And I, I know I've kind of been down on Dawn, you know, um, as of late, well, <laughs> for the past few months. But the one thing this regime has done, it seems like some of these talents, they've shown an interest of re-signing them. And I think that's good for morale. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, they did make another signing, too. I forget the guy's first name. I know his last name was Gunn, right? Oh, yeah, he was a new, he was a new signing, uh, Tony Gunn. Yeah, there you go. Um, I don't know much about him, but... Uh... Seemed like there was a lot of positive uh, feedback about him. I think he was on one of the recent Twitch specials or One Night Only, and it seemed like his uh, performance went over well with the fans. So that's good for them, bringing in more talent that is less known. I think if that is the direction they go, I think uh, there will definitely be positive things on the horizon for them. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Here's here's one question, uh, or just like more of a comment from Wrestle Nation. He was just saying that Impact needs some developmental show with their partnerships so they can get fresh stars. Um, I, I think we've talked about that uh, a lot. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I think the thing with the partnerships is, you know, if Impact Talent's appearing at these other shows, I'm pretty sure the shows are going to want the top names. They're not going to necessarily want guys that Impact wants to develop. So I think that's where you might have your difficulty. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, I like where the mindset is. I mean, you have any thoughts on that? No, I, I agree with that completely. And then the other one was uh, from Anderson Foster. He was talking about what about a house a house of hardcore title or Twitch title, and then and then it could be used for explosion. Um, once again, um, I know you know <laughs> someone had mentioned <laughs> they're tired of hearing us talking about mid card titles, right? Um, but I do think just think it's necessary just because it gives guys that. You know, might not be in the world title picture and not really fit the X division. You know, something to kind of strive for. So, um, yeah, at this point, I I'm for any mid card title. I don't think we'll get one, but uh, not. I'm not I'm not opposed to it. Yeah, no, I agree with that. And you know, something that could possibly change hands at the Twitch shows, even if it was just defended there. So it gives you know a reason for people to tune in because title changes definitely draw people in. There's no doubt about that. Yeah. Oh, hey, we forgot to mention the we got a change at United as we stand for the intergender match. Oh, yes, that's right. It will now be Tessa Blanchard versus Joey Ryan because uh, Eli Drake, I guess, stuck to his guns and said he wanted no part of it. So uh, that is very interesting to see. We don't even know if he's going to be showcased on the show. I mean, you know, when he initially had uh, tweeted out that he wasn't going to be a part of the match, I thought it was just kind of he was just messing around uh, working uh, a Twitter, Mm -hmm. Twitter person, Twitter follower, I should say. But to actually not, you know, for him to be removed from the card, that was really telling. Like that was the writing on the wall. Like he's probably on his way out, you know, and, you know, to him. And I don't think look, I don't think Eli and I, I don't know Eli you know, personally, but I don't think he has so much of a problem wrestling Tessa, but some people aren't down with the intergender stuff. I mean, it, it, you can't get mad at the people or not, you know, there's people for it, they respect it. It's not everybody's cup of tea. And Eli might think that that's not for him. You know, um, Triple H pointed it out best because I, I think a fan had asked him, mm-hmm. you know, about intergender. Why doesn't you know WWE do it? And I think the point he made, and it was, you know, similar to my point, like, I don't think women facing men proves anything. Like, I think women's wrestling has come a long way. I mean, the way that it's showcased now, it's treated as an equal. And what I mean by that is you have the main eventing, and it's no big deal. You can, you know, Impact's been doing it for the longest time. Oh, yeah. And, and nobody blinks. Like, it's like, oh, cool. Our main event is a knockout title, uh, title match. Awesome. You know, there's not this kind of like, oh, okay, we're part of some type of women's revolution. So with that said, um, you know, I don't see the need for it. And I get it. You know, they want to just show that, hey, they can work that style. But I think if you're doing that, then why even have a women's division? Just scrap it. Just have everybody on the same division. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but then obviously you're not going to do, you know, you're not going to do that. So I just don't get it. And then as for as far as Joey Ryan, you know, (laughs) it's. insertion in it you know i mean i've seen some of his stuff some people are into it i'm not one of those people i'm not gonna crap on it because hey that's what got him over he seems really popular on the indies oh yeah but you know you wonder what type of match is this gonna be a comedy match for somebody like tessa who tessa's really kind of portrayed as a strong character no no nonsense so um yeah, it just just interesting. I, I really think they could use Tessa in a better capacity for this show, but this is what they decided to go with. Right. Well, it's funny you brought up the point earlier about how young Tessa and Jordan are. And, you know, this is kind of how the women's wrestling is coming up now. And the women are they're They're very good. So, I mean, like you said, it doesn't necessarily need to be man versus woman because the women are doing just as good. And the matches are going to be just as good. And the talent is all there. It was just 
it was, you know, behind the times, basically. So I, I think at this point, the separate divisions is um, I'm perfectly fine with the way things are. Yeah, it just doesn't make no sense. And, you know, I get it, you know, for some people. And I, I do believe it's kind of a weird infatuation. Like some people like women seeing women beat up men. I don't know why. Um, but, yeah, and, and I, I think that's what we see. But <laughs> I always just say this. Once I see Brock Lesnar facing a woman in a match, that I'll, I'll I'll jump on board for indie <laughs> wrestling. I, you know, to see him give some some woman's wrestler who's what 130, 140 pounds, like 20 German suplexes, or and then maybe an F5 into the ring post. Once I see that, I'll, I'll be sold on that. But until then, I really think women are great enough in their own right where they don't need to face men to prove anything. I I agree there. So, um, do we have anything else for today? Yeah, I wanted to share share. Uh, I wanted your opinion on this. I had seen this article from mm-hmm. uh, the Hurricane of uh, former uh, Gregory Holmes or oh, Shane Holmes or whatever. Not on good terms with Impact fans. <laughs> well, he made a point, and I wanted your take on this as well as listeners. Hopefully, get some good feedback. He was talking about, I guess, with WWE's cruiserweight division, talking about it. You know, should they even have it at this point? Given that you look at the landscape of wrestling now, a lot of the people being pushed, whether they're champion or in, you know, in the main event scene are essentially cruiserweights. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and they're not competing in divisions. So what's the point of it? And I was just thinking as far as with Impact, the X division, um, you know, our current champion right now, Johnny Impact, he would be an X division guy. And we see a lot of matches where you know a lot of X division is implemented, whether it's dives or, you know, anything else. So I was just wondering if they scrapped the X division entirely or okay here, I'm sorry for one, it's a two part. Do you think having a cruiserweight division in wrestling and all in all sorts of wrestling at this or lightweight or whatever mm-hmm. at this point do you think it's pointless given that we're seeing a lot of the smaller wrestlers being thrusted into yeah. the main event scene I, and I, then I, also I, also I, and then <laughs> on in the last part is also do you see do you think with the x division should they just scrap it entirely and just make that kind of like mid card you know no limitations just a mid card title well yeah i mean i the cruiserweights are kind of what drew me into WCW, but they never were really showcased on their own, so to speak, like they are in WWE, where they have their own television show. And they were almost made as a sideshow act, but um, you've started integrating them more. And like you said, that, you know, regardless of where Johnny would be, he would pretty much fit in as that light heavyweight cruiser. Uh, wrestler and um, I I don't know so much for scrapping the X division because it almost seems like that is basically their mid card title and we still don't have an identity for that division so um, I guess I'm okay with it just the way it is yeah I'm a big fan of cruiserweight wrestling I love WCW's cruiserweight division only because it was a nice blend of uh, high flyers Matt wrestlers like you had uh, um, you know your Billy Malenko (laughs) yes and that's what I loved and and I think here's the thing where I could see some people being at crossroads. It's it's kind of one of these things where you see certain people get to move on from it and some people get stuck there. Mm-hmm. Like when you think of WCW's Cruiserweight division, you know, guys like the late great Eddie Guerrero, or Chris Jericho, they were able to move up and become world champions and Oh, and Ray Mysterio as well, be able to right. come world champions, whereas a guy like Psychosis and Juventud Guerrera, they kind of stayed in, uh, you know, that cruiserweight status. And then same thing applies for, like, the X Division. I mean, we've seen guys like AJ Styles, um, even though Samoa Joe wasn't, you know, your typical cruiserweight. I mean, um, Chris Saban, we've seen them move on to capture the uh, world championship. So I think, you know, where it could be, you know, where, where it can be tough is because some people, only a limited few, get to kind of break through, and some of them are stuck there. But then again, too, it's no different than the mid card. Not everybody who wins, you know, whether it's the Intercontinental title or TV title, go on to win the world title. Right. And even, too, you've seen some cruisers who they might have, you know, reached mid card status and they just stay there. So, I mean, I love it. I think there's a place for it. But just like in any division, not everybody's going to be world champion. So I think 
and, and, and if anything, too, the one thing that I, I like is sometimes when you have a top name, probably just kind of dip down and win that cruiserweight title, win that X division title. Cause it gives it prestige. And if you really want to get somebody over, like just say, for example, if Johnny impact won the X division title, you know, for him being a former world champion and to carry that belt, you know, whoever beats him for it, that's going to be the biggest rub that, you know, if you really wanted to put somebody over. Right. So I, I, I do think there's a place for it, but I just thought it was interesting because it's like, you know, it's true. Like I look at it like Daniel Bryan. Yeah. He would be a cruiserweight and mm-hmm. you know, you, People wouldn't think of him like one, but yeah, he's a smaller guy. You know, Finn Balor, he's a smaller guy. And I think with like an impact, you know, Johnny Impact, you know, he's uh, essentially a smaller guy. I think, you know, he's really just the main event guy right now. But um, as far as in, uh, so as far as somebody would be X Division, um, maybe somebody like Pentagon would probably, you could probably thrust in there. Right. But I, I just, I thought it was just interesting. And I was just saw like, wow, you know, you know, should they do away with it? I right. just, I thought thought it was just an interesting topic. Well, I, I think they did miss the boat there with um, Brian Cage being the X Division champion and nobody getting the rub from that because it didn't matter. A loss to him, it didn't matter. I mean, you know, he did. He, his first loss was to Sammy Callahan in a six man tag. So seeing somebody go over, you know, even with shenanigans, I, I think would have been a smart decision. I think would have gone a long way. You know, it's weird because, and that was the one thing, because <laughs> bringing back the intergender, when I seen him fight fight Tessa, face Tessa, I thought what made it not believable was the match they worked. I thought if you would have had it kind of a David versus Goliath type style, like, mm-hmm. you know, what we've seen in Mysterio matches, or he's, you know, working the underdog role, you could get away with it. But, you know, when we're seeing guys bigger than Tessa, get nothing on Brian Cage, but then Tessa, who's smaller than these guys, is getting all this offense, you know, you kinda like, you know, really? <laughs> and and, you know, when they put him as champion, they booked it where they didn't I mean the the one story they did have if they wanted to was um him with against Desmond Xavier. They had a little bit something there where he kept coming up close but falling up short. But, you know, they booked him to a point where they didn't have anyone that, you know, you could that they probably felt that the fans could buy into beating him one on one, and I thought they wasted his first loss in that six man match. I thought his first loss should have probably been him losing the title, mm-hmm. but I I thought they you know made it a point like, hey, we want to put him in the world title picture as soon as possible. I don't know if it was a knee jerk reaction because of Aries, the whole Aries debacle, or you know that was just a mindset. And you know there were people who thought he wasn't ready. Um, look, the way where Impact is at this point, they can take all the chances in the world. I don't think anything is gonna gonna harm harm mm-hmm. them. If anything, I think that would help them more. Um, but yeah, but yeah. then closing out, we did didn't we get a bump in uh the Twitter Twitter views? Yeah, Twitch. I mean not mean, Twitter, Twitch. Twitch. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, I think they were hovering somewhere around uh, 9,500, 10,000. So that, that was good to see, and well. Like I said, we had a different opinion on our perspective of the show, but hey, that's what wrestling is all about. It's all based on perspective. Yeah, I agree. And look, that just comes to show you anytime you promote a, a title match, people like seeing title matches. And that's I think next week's show should do do well. Um, you know, and I, I know there's there's an audience because the same person who had commented, you know, and I'm not, you know, I, I appreciate anybody's opinion that differs from mine. You know, he's talking about worrying about views. Um, I, I just find it just so fa- fascinating how, you know, we get these big leaps and these big drops. And you just kind of just wonder, like, what causes that? You know, if it was just something on a weekly basis where maybe it was a thousand increase, uh, 2000 decrease, uh, I could understand that. But yeah. to, you know, to have a significant leap and then a six, significant drop is just always puzzling. So, and for them to get what they got, and I know they were competing against that Ring of Honor pay per view, that's pretty good. So, um, yeah, great job by them, despite me not really feeling the show. <laughs> hey, and you're allowed to have your own opinion. But, uh, <laughs> I think that is all we have for this week. Thanks, guys, for checking out our show. Ro, thanks for joining me as usual. And until next time, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks, guys. Bye.